Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. The new Spanish drama to hit Netflix is The Cook of Castamar, or La Cocinera de Castamar. It's a period piece with romance, drama, and deceit. But is that enough to make it a compelling watch? In 1720 Madrid, a talented cook catches the eye of a widowed duke just as he returns to aristocratic society. Diego is the Duke of Castamar, a large palace where the family has served the crown for many years. Now, the Duke is a widower who has been mourning for quite a while when a new cook joins the service staff of the estate. Clara is kind and friendly, and above all, she's a wonderful cook whose talent is immediately recognized by everybody in the house. Now, this might remind you somewhat of Downton Abbey or even Gosford Park, where the story alternates focus on those that live above in the aristocracy and then those that live below as the help. The costume design and set pieces are wonderful to look at, and we are truly transported to the early 18th century, and I especially like that the story revolved around a Spanish family. Now, typically movies or shows like these, I think center more around French or English society. I don't remember ever seeing one set in the Spanish culture, even though I'm sure they exist. So the romance aspect of this, or at least the hope of romance, is quite present, and it's obvious almost from the very start. We see two people who are drawn to each other, but because of class and society's rules, they don't get to be together. And this tension I know isn't unique to stories, but it's executed really well here. And there's a very strong romantic feeling that courses throughout the story. And not only between Diego and Clara, but there are also several scenarios where intense feelings are held, but to be fully realized would be frowned upon by society. There's also a good storyline of trouble and deceit at work throughout the narrative. It's pretty complex, which makes the story enjoyable, but it's not so twisted that it doesn't feel plausible. We watch scheming happen between a few characters, but those schemes then cause ripples that are going to affect countless others. And the story handles these well and reveals the consequences and the connections at just the right moments. Some are predictable, but they still work to increase the drama of the show. So this is based on a novel by Fernando J. Munez, and I've not read it, so I can't speak to how well the show sticks to the source material. But what I do know is that this is an epic drama that packs a lot into the timeline that only spans a few months. The intrigue, deception, mystery, and romance are all balanced to make a story that I became fully invested in. I thought the landscapes and visuals were also stunning, but I never got a sense, though, of how far things were from each other distance-wise, so it did make judging time a little hard, especially as characters would travel from one place to another. Now, the pace of this is slower, especially because we watch a lot of dinners occur or situations where the characters are just standing around chatting and drinking wine. But these moments, they do build out our characters and key us into events that are about to come. Now, the actors do a great job of crafting characters that resonate with us. Some of the characters annoyed me quite a bit, but then they grew on me as the story went along, begging me to forgive the sins that I knew they had committed. And other characters are just downright nasty and vile, and we love to hate them. And then there are even more that just grow in their likability the more they're on screen. There's such a good mix of characters in this, and it's not just the main players that are engaging. The supporting cast also elicits some really good emotion from us, too. Because there is such a large cast of characters, it could be easy to have some that just kind of fall by the wayside, but for the most part, the story engages each of them to let the characters shine in their appropriate moments. There's humor that's infused throughout, and not in a comedic way, but just in how characters would look or react with small facial expressions, it just caused me to chuckle. There's also a good amount of frustration that comes from the interactions. Mainly, this is tension that the story creates to make us want a character to say or see something, but when it doesn't happen, we have to wait longer for that domino to fall, which is going to cause the chain reaction that we've been hoping for. Now, there was a portion of the story that took up some prominence at the beginning of the series and then kind of faded away, like it was almost forgotten. And part of that had to do with the king. There was a storyline with him that felt pretty important, but by the midway point of the show, it had basically disappeared. And that just felt a little strange to me, and its absence became noticeable. Now, the show is going to take some commitment to finish. There are 12 episodes, and each is about an hour long. Now, I watched over the course of three days, but it can obviously be binged in one day if you want. And I didn't get bored while watching. Part is because I'm a sucker for a good romance, and this one kept teasing the possibility along the entire time. But also, I enjoy a good story. And when the story can engage me and pull me in with some good characters, it's hard to tear me away. But even with a great story, there were still some portions that were wanting for me. 
Now, episode seven had this very melodramatic portion, and had it gone further, it would have made me laugh. It was just, it was a cliche reaction, and it felt blown out of proportion by the story and then by the characters. Now, also in that episode, something happened to a character that is played out to be much more dire than the situation actually appeared. And then we have a time jump of indeterminate length, and then everything was resolved. It just felt rushed to have the story address the situation in this way. But these sorts of indeterminate time jumps happen several times throughout the show. And we can't tell really the passage of time, but we know it wasn't weeks. And it also wasn't months, it was shorter than that. And the ending also feels a little rushed to me. Given that I've just invested almost 12 hours in this show, to have everything wrap up in a matter of minutes made me feel cheated just a little bit. Now, I don't need it to take the whole final episode as an epilogue, but some events apparently happen, but we don't get to see them. We only get a line or two of dialogue that is meant to explain everything. But even with the time jumps, the rushed ending, some of the melodrama, and even the partially forgotten storylines, I did really enjoy the story. The drama that was created was captivating, and the characters were interesting, and they were developed well. And the romance angle was also very exciting, and I became absorbed in the exchange of feelings and looks given by the characters. Now, I don't foresee this having another season, and I don't really think it even needs one. The story promises a sweeping and epic, if not frustrating, love story, and it delivers along with the mystery, drama, and deception. There's a bunch of sex, some nudity, some profanity, and some moments of brutal violence. I give The Cook of Castamar four out of five couches. What's a good romantic movie or show you've watched recently? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.